Okay, so, so far we've been over how to make the scanner and how to program it in Arduino. In this part I'll be showing you how to write the first program in processing, which will be able to take what the webcam sees and turn it into a text file with pixel coordinates to then send to a second processing program that can then turn it into a 3D image. For this you'll need to download processing, uh, the processing program from their website, but don't download their latest version, I'm using a slightly older version. Uh, because the latest one, the 3D renderer, doesn't work on it properly. So until they release a fixed version of that, use version 3.0b5. This is the latest version that will work with what we're wanting to do. So first we need to import the video library so that we can uh, use the webcam and play about with the incoming images. Then import serial, the serial library so we can get the incoming angles from the Arduino. We can set up the serial communication, just call it port. I'm going to create an integer here called line feed and equal it to 10. Uh, this is to help separate the incoming serial data. Each incoming motor angle is separated using print line, which is effectively pressing enter for a new paragraph. The number 10 is the ASCII number for a new line, so that's what we're checking for. Here we need to set up the object print writer just call it output. This is for writing information to a text file and a capture object here called video for well for capturing the video. So then we need to set up two images. Uh, the first one takes what the webcam sees and extracts all the red colour out of it. The second one takes that image and makes it a bit nicer and more sensible. So when we're set up we need to create the window image that will that we'll see when it's running. I'm going to make it a resolution of 640 by 960. This is because the webcam resolution is 640 by 480 and we want space for the webcam image as well as another space below that to put in image one or two or we can try squeezing both of them in together. So here we can specify the webcam's resolution. Here you can also specify the frame rate but it didn't work so well for me so I just left it blank. That way it can make up its own mind as to what it wants the frame rate to be. So then we can start the video. Uh, and here I'm, I'm setting up some parameters for the serial communication. The Arduino is connected to port COM3. Yours will probably be something else. And the baud rate is set to 9600, the same as it was on the Arduino. And here I'm just uh, clearing the port in case there's anything clogging up the buffer before I want it. Here I'm setting up the text file to be written to. You can call this anything you want and it will be saved in the, the folder of this sketch. If you run the sketch more than once, uh, the old one will be written over and deleted, so make sure you move it somewhere else if you want to keep it. So here I'm making a string to temp temporarily save the incoming data from the Arduino, which is saved as a string. Uh, we also need a float that holds the motor's current angle. These two contain exactly the same thing but in a different format. They're both the motor's current angle, but one is saved as a string and then it's converted to a float, which is a lot more useful. So here we get into the draw loop. This is very similar to the void loop in Arduino, uh, but first I'll give you a quick overview of what we're actually going to do inside it. So basically we're taking an image from the webcam and picking out all of the red colour from it. This gives us a, an outline profile of whatever the laser is shining on. This extracted profile is saved to image 1 as white pixels and a black background. Except this is a bit messy because the line laser has a certain thickness so it shows up as a fuzzy white line going down. So if this was sent to the 3D renderer it should make, it, it would make the 3D model very thick with a ridiculous number of data points and this would probably crash the program. So we use that second image to tidy this up and make something a lot neater. So we can scan over the first fuzzy image and take only the middle pixel in each line and put that into our new image. This gives us a new black and white image with a nice thin line instead of a thick fuzzy one. But this isn't good enough because it would still give us a huge file with very solid surfaces. So to solve this we'll only make a pixel, a white pixel in the second image on every fifth line or tenth line, it doesn't really matter. Every time we add a new white pixel to the second image, we save the coordinates of that pixel along with the motor angle to the text file. 
These coordinates are what we use in the next sketch to build up the 3D model. So first we need to set up our two images. These will both reset every time the loop returns. But that doesn't matter because we'll already have taken out all the useful information and shoved it into the text file. So both of the images are 640 by 480 pixels, the same as the webcam. And they're saved as RGB image, red, green and blue. I'm setting the background to black here. I don't think this is actually necessary, but I'm used to doing it, so I'm going to do it here anyway. Here I'm going to start writing to the text file. So I've written a semicolon to start a new frame, and then written the motor angle, which will start at zero. We haven't actually read the motor angle from the Arduino yet, which makes me a bit strange, but we can assume that it's zero. And the next time the loop goes around, it'll print the new angle from the Arduino. Doing it this way might seem a bit back to front because we're printing the angle and then we're reading it from the Arduino. Um, but all I can say is that I know this works. If we do it the other way around, the sensible way, it just prints a bunch of Chinese characters and I'm not going to pretend to understand why that happens, it just does. So here we're checking to see if there's a frame available from the webcam. And if there is, then great, we read it. So we use video.read to save a webcam frame to an image. Here we print the image from the webcam on the viewing window that we'll see when it's running. I'll put it down near the end of the loop uh, so they can put it with the other stuff that needs rendered. Its position is set to 0, 0 in the x and y direction. Uh, this is a bit confusing for mathsy folk because we're used to starting from the bottom left, whereas in processing it starts from the top left. Okay, so now we can see the webcam, what the webcam is seeing. It's scanning over the image there with the cloth backdrop and three hacky sacks and a tin. So we can see clearly from this that things uh, that are further away appear at the left hand side of the screen and things that are closer appear towards the right. So now we can check to see if the motor angle information from the Arduino is ready. First check to see if the whole number has been sent by checking to see if there is four or more bytes in the serial buffer. This is because a float contains four bytes. This probably isn't the best way of doing it, but it seems to work okay. So if we have the number ready in the buffer, then we need to read it until we hit a new line. A new line is 10 in ASCII format, which we saved earlier as the parameter line feed. We save what was read in the, in the string my string, then check it to make sure that I actually read something. <clears throat> we then convert it to an actual float number instead of just a number made up of characters. Okay, so now we're actually getting onto the image side of stuff. Uh, this is where we create our first image with the red color extracted from the webcam. We'll use a for loop to run through every individual pixel from the top left down to the bottom right. They're all individually numbered in that direction, <coughs> going from 0 to 640 times 480, whatever that is, I think it's 300,000. Uh, we use the width times height for the viewing window to get the number of pixels, but remember we need to divide it by 2 because the webcam only takes up half of that viewing window. So this loop goes through every pixel it gets from the camera incrementally and any that are above any red pixels that are above a certain threshold get turned white in the new image and all the other pixels are left black. So we can do that using an if statement. So if the red value of the current pixel is above 100 for example, then make the image pixel 1 in the same location i a white pixel and the rest is left black by default. So if we find a webcam pixel that meets the criteria of over a certain threshold, then you take the coordinate of that and shove it into the new image as a white pixel. So if we now go back down to where I wrote the code for showing the video in the display window, we can do the same for the image that we just made. It should go halfway down the window so that we can see both of them. If we run this, then we should get an image like I mentioned earlier with the fuzzy white line. Perfect. So now we can see exactly what we saw before, but replicated as a, basically a binary image. Um, so now we know exactly where the uh, important parts of the red line are. 
The slight problem with this though is I set the threshold a bit too high. Uh, you see the white, uh, the red line, we can see it in the top image on the surface of the table, whereas it doesn't come up as a white line in the bottom one. This is because the threshold's at 100, I should have had it set much lower, like 10 or something. I'll leave it there as an example of what you shouldn't do next time. Now we'll create the second image, which is a cleaned up version of the first one that we just made. So again, make a for loop that runs through every pixel in the image. Then we need to make a new integer k. Uh, this acts a, a bit like integer i uh, in the for loop is a counter, but for the while loop that we're about to make. Okay, so this is where the cleaning up part happens, and it's a bit tricky, so you might want to rewatch it a couple of times. So what we're doing here is run through every pixel using the for loop, then as soon as we hit a white pixel in that row, uh, the while loop kicks into action, and while the while loop is running, it counts using the integer k. When it sees a black pixel again, it stops <coughs> and makes a white pixel in image 2 at the middle of that bunch of white pixels that it just saw in image 1. So in this while loop bracket, it's only going to run when it sees a white pixel in image 1. So we can check the brightness of the current pixel, and if it's 255, i.e. white, then we jump into the while loop. But we also need to add something else. We have to make sure that it doesn't run off the edge of the image. If the last pixel is white, then the while loop will try and count the next one, which doesn't exist, and this messes things up. So we need to stop it just short of that by putting in this. All this while loop does is count the number of white pixels in a row. Uh, these are counted using the variable k, but we also want to keep counting up in i, because otherwise it wouldn't go anywhere and k would just count to infinity. So now in our new clean image number 2, we need to put a white pixel at the midpoint of where we just saw that row of white pixels in image 1. So we can use an if statement saying that, first of all, make sure that k is more than 0. In other words, did that while loop we just wrote actually find any white pixels at all? And in that statement, <coughs> we can build up the second image. And we can also write to the text file the x and y coordinates of the white pixels within the second image. We don't actually need the second image at all for writing to the text file. We could just write to the text file and ignore the second image. But it's, it's nice to have it there to be able to see what's going on for debugging and that kind of thing. So, how are we actually going to build up the second image? Well, we need to stick a white pixel in the middle of where we just found a bunch of them in a row in image 1. So that's done by placing a white pixel at pixel i minus half of k. Remember that k is the length of the white pixel row in image 1. So by doing this, we're putting a single white pixel in the middle of that for image 2. So now we need to print the x and y coordinates of this new white pixel in the text file. So we start by putting a comma to separate the x-coordinate from the motor angle which we've already put in the text file. So for the x-coordinate we don't care what row it's in, we just care about the column, i.e. how far along in the x-direction it is. So for that uh, we want to divide i by 640 but we only want to know the remainder after the division. We're not interested in the whole number part. So again like we did in Arduino we can use the modulo tool. And all this gives us is the remainder after a division. So for example, 20 modulo of 640 is 20 because it's the remainder. If I was 645, then the remainder or the modulo would be 5. And uh, the y coordinate is a bit easier. It's just i divided by the number of columns in the image. Uh, it prints it as an integer, so there's no decimal places, which is handy. Uh, so we don't need to round it because it does that itself. So for example, if we're at pixel 20, then 20 divided by 640, uh, which is the width of the image by the way, uh, this is 0 0.031, which rounds down to 0. And this is perfect because it's in row 0. If it's pixel 5000, uh, then it's in row 5000 divided by 640, which is in row 7.8, uh, which rounds down to row number 7, which is exactly what we want. So now we have both of our x and y coordinates printed to the text file. And again I'm going to go down to the image section so I can write over image 1 and just replace it with image 2 so we can see how that turned out. Okay perfect, so this is exactly what we want to see. A nice thin white line with no fuzziness.
So I'm going to go back and add something here for a minute. <coughs> um, there's a pixel that always stays white. I think it's a dead pixel on the webcam. And when this is rendered in 3D, it creates a big white circle around the outside. So I'm going to get rid of it here. I managed to find out that the pixel uh, number is 195,201. So all I'm going to do is say in this if statement that it can only make a new white pixel anywhere that's not that pixel. So we now have a nice thin white line that's only one pixel wide. However, this is still far too much information to send to the text file when spread over a wide angle. If we go back to the file loop, we can add another statement which will reduce this pixel count. So basically all we're doing here is only reading every fifth row. So we get the current row, i.e. what the y coordinate is, by doing exactly what we did before. Then you take the modulo of 5, so this will mean that the rows will be counted in sets of 5 now. So for example, uh, rows 0 to 4 are still rows 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4, but row 5 is now another row 0, and 6 is row 1, etc. So this is very useful because now we can say only read rows that are numbered 0. So this ignores every row that's numbered 1, 2, 3 and 4. So if we run the program again, we can now see that this has given us a perforated line. This is fantastic because it still gives us a lot of detail, but allows the text file to be a fifth of the size. It also allows the 3D renderer to run a lot more smoothly. I think it also looks much better in the 3D scan because it means you don't just have a solid white image. It also, if you had too many white pixels in a column, it makes it look like there's lots of staggered rows, whereas if you even out the spacing in the rows and the columns, it looks much nicer. Okay, so down here I'm just going to print the motor angle to the uh, serial monitor. Now I'm going to write an if statement that's used to wrap up the text file and safely close it once it's scanning's finished. So remember in Arduino how we set the number 500 at the end of the run. This is where that comes in now. If the motor angle comes in at over 450 degrees, i.e. 500, then it jumps into this statement which uses output.flush, which writes all of the remaining data to the file, and then output.close, which closes the text file, and then the exit command, which stops the sketch from running. And as a wee bit of an extra, uh, I'll write down here the same thing I just did, but one that's commanded by pressing any key on the keyboard, so if the scan's going... So if your scan's gone badly or the motor is hit against something, you can exit the program quickly and easily by just mashing the keyboard. So now after we've run the program, uh, we can open up the text file and see the coordinates that we just printed. Okay, so that's it for the first processing tutorial. I um, hope you're following along okay. If not, please ask any questions in the comment sections and I'll try and help. So in the next and final part, I'll show you how to take that uh, those text coordinates and turn it into a 3D point cloud.